What's up folks, how's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are having an awesome holiday season. And in this video, we're going to be talking about two smartwatches that have been updated, but not a drastic update from the original design. Uh, firstly, we're going to talk about the Series 2 Apple Watch and see how it compares against the Samsung Gear S3. We have the Frontier Edition. Now, from a design perspective, you can see that the Samsung S3 is quite a large smartwatch. It's probably one of the downsides towards it. Uh, some people may not want such a huge item on their wrist at all times versus if you get the 38 millimeter version of the Apple Watch it's quite a subtle and neutral design and it fits pretty much on everybody's wrist without looking too large of course however if you do want the 42 millimeter version you still have that option on the series 2 as well now the upgrades from the series 2 to from the series 1 on the Apple Watch isn't major uh, basically you have now a built-in GPS as well as a better overall weather and water resistance and seals it can go down up to 50 meters now as well as a faster dual core chip and uh, the screen is also slightly brighter and of course all the series 2 have a uh, watch os 3 pre-installed making applications and the overall process of using the watch a lot quicker snappier and more efficient now on the samsung side the gear s3 isn't a huge departure from the s2 you can see that it's pretty much identical in terms of its core design and controls you have that awesome rotating bezel that we really love physically the S3 is slightly larger in pretty much all dimensional regards compared to the S2. Uh, you do have some internal similarities as well, pretty much the same uh, internal CPU as well as the same awesome IP68 certification for dust and water resistance. When it comes to the upgrades, uh, you do have a little bit more RAM as well as a larger overall battery uh, compared to the S2. And all across the S3 lineup, you have integrated a GPS as well as a speaker, which was only available on the 3G version of the previous generation Gear S2, but now you have it across all Wi-Fi and 3G models, both on the Frontier, S3, and the Classic. Now, it's certainly kind of difficult to compare the uh, Gear S3 versus the Apple Watch because they run on completely different platforms, even though their goals are pretty similar in the sense that they want to track your heart rate and your overall physical activity in terms of how many steps you've taken throughout the day, as well as give you vital notifications, uh, kind of a portal between you and your smartphone so instead of well, viewing your smartphone all the time you can just glance at, at important uh, key information on the smartwatch itself and of course uh, tell time and do a whole bunch of different app dependent things now obviously on the apple side uh, the series 2 apple watch is specifically designed for the iphone you can't really use it on any other platform when it comes to the s3 it'll work with pretty much all android phones and certainly all samsung devices so so uh, there's a little bit more of a broader audience uh, for the Gear S3 uh, dictated by the number of Android devices compared to iOS devices uh, that are specifically uh, on iPhone. Unfortunately, the Apple Watch will not work with the iPads. Now, one of the big highlights of why I think these are probably two of the best smartwatches out right now is how they kind of uh, dictate control. On the Apple Watch, you have uh, the uh, digital crown interface as well as uh, the large home button as well as a very responsive force touch capacitive touch screen which allows you to utilize all the different capabilities of the apple watch in a very intuitive and easy to use manner and the same thing goes for the samsung gear 3 which also has a nice responsive uh, touch screen it's not forced touch but with the inclusion of the custom uh, tizen operating system from samsung and the large rotating bezel navigating through the operating system using certain applications inputting information is really nicely integrated and and also very intuitive to use. I personally like the rotating bezel uh, better than uh, the uh, digital crown interface on the Apple Watch, but uh, both certainly have their places and both work for the overall kind of form factor that each platform runs on. Now, in terms of displays, uh, both are using organic LED technology, so the black levels are exceptional, and uh, the both displays are very, very bright. They can push out a lot of luminosity, even in uh, brightly lit, uh, direct sunlit conditions, so very very, very easy to use, especially at full brightness. And in terms of the actual dimensions, uh, the uh, Gear S3 is about 1.3 inches diagonally. It is a circular display opposed uh, to the more square display that we find on the Apple Watch, which is about 1.5 inches. In terms of actual resolution, the Gear S3 is 360 by 360, and the 38 millimeter version of the Series 2 Apple Watch is 340 by 272 pixels. In terms of the glass, the 
Samsung is using Corning Gorilla Glass SR Plus. And depending on which version of the Apple Watch you get, uh, like for example, over here with the Sports Edition, you get Ion X Strengthened Glass, which is as tough as what we find on the Samsung. But of course, with the higher end versions, you get the Sapphire Crystal Glass, which is going to be even better when it comes to overall durability and scratch resistance. Now, moving on, the internal specs on both smartwatches are as follows. On the uh, S3, we have an Exynos 7270, a dual core processor clocked around one gigahertz. It has four gigabytes of internal memory and about 768 megabytes of RAM. On the Series 2 Apple Watch, we have a, a dual core chip, which is uh, faster than the previous generation. Apple hasn't given out specific information of how much faster in terms of clock speed and everything. But beyond that, we have uh, 5.7 gigabytes of internal available memory and about 512 megabytes of RAM. Now, uh, both have very similar sensor technology, accelerometers, gyroscopes, barometer, ambient light sensor, as well as an optical heart rate monitor integrated at the back of the watch. So they're great for utilizing all that health and fitness tracking information that there's a lot of specific apps that you can use for if you're doing a lot of running or just generally seeing how your resting heart rate is compared to when you're walking or doing any kind of exercise. Of course, I couple that with the, the uh, built-in GPS that both smartwatches have. And this makes both units an excellent companion for all you avid runners out there where it can actually track your running path, your running pace, as well as how many calories you've burned in a more efficient and accurate way compared to other smartwatches that just use a pedometer. In terms of some of the other connectivity options, uh, both have uh, Wi-Fi 802.11 BG and N integrated, Bluetooth uh, 4.0 or 4.2, as well as NFC, and some versions of the Gear S3 have uh, an LTE antenna in there, so you can add a SIM card, a micro SIM card, and utilize uh, some of the internet connectivity options without having to be uh, tethered all the time to a smartphone uh, like you have to be on the Apple Watch. Now, lastly, when it comes to battery life in terms of actual capacity, as we mentioned before, the big upgrade from the uh, new S3 to the previous generation S2 is that we have a larger battery, 380 milliamp hours. And on the Apple Watch, uh, relatively similar battery size compared to the Series 1, 273 milliamp hours. And I basically did a kind of rundown between uh, both uh, smartwatches, uh, used them on a consistent basis for about a week's time, and I kind of averaged on how much uh, battery life I got from 100 to around 0%. And on the Apple Watch side, uh, based on my day-to-day -day use, I got around 25 hours of usage before I needed a charge versus on the S3. With the always-on display feature turned off, I averaged around 34 hours. That's about nine more hours compared to the Apple Watch. Uh, certainly uh, with that larger battery capacity and the improvements from a hardware and software perspective, Samsung has definitely done an excellent job in terms of uh, maintaining a really great endurance when it comes to battery life on their new model compared to the previous generation and it's even beating the Apple Watch but of course battery life is going to be dependent upon how you use the watch most people are going to be probably charging their watch on a daily consistent basis like they do with their smartphone so it's not a big problem both of them are probably going to be good for at least two days uh, in terms of normal usage but besides uh, those things guys that's really it uh, definitely love to hear your thoughts in terms of which smartwatch you prefer in most cases people have their cams whether that's iOS or Android I certainly think think that both of these smartwatches are probably uh, some of the best when it comes to the control interface and the overall design and it's definitely something uh, worth looking into if you finally want to get into an Apple Watch for the first time or want to upgrade from a more simpler uh, smartwatch to one that has uh, a number of great features. But besides that guys, give us a thumbs up if you like this video, check out the description for more details. Thank you so much for watching, thanks for your support, and we'll see you later. Take care.